Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and today I'm going to talk about why I don't like to use these digital angle gauges, and also why you definitely shouldn't use these factory gauges on your table saw. There's a few good reasons why and why not to use these digital angle gauges. I never really use this factory gauge. It's just too inconsistent. Um, it's really just to get an estimate. These digital gauges are better than the factory scales, but they still aren't perfect, and I'll go into why. Uh, you may wonder what you are supposed to use if you can't use either of these, and you need to use a quality square like this Woodpecker or Star It ones. They're not cheap. Uh, don't buy a Home Depot one because they're probably going to be less accurate than the digital gauge. They cost, you know, about $90 to $100 for one of these. They should last you forever if you take care of it, but that's what I would use. So what's wrong with the digital ones? Well, if you look at their uh, factory calibration, they say they have a factory error of 0.2 degrees. So from the factory, if it's working absolutely perfect, it's going to be off by up to 0.2 degrees, which means when it reads 90, it could actually be anywhere from 89.8 to 90.2. So that's a full half degree swing, which really isn't consistent enough for the type of woodworking I do anyway. I had just aligned my jointer fence with my star at square, and I was just curious what my digital gauge that I've had for about two years would read. And you can see it was off by quite a bit more than the 0.2 that the factory says. Uh, there is, of course, a chance that my square was off if I dropped it or something, so I luckily have another good woodpecker one, and they were both very consistent. So the error was definitely in the digital gauge. I wanted to set the fence till the gauge read 90 to see how far off it physically was from the square. And depending on your perspective, it may seem like a lot, it may not seem like a lot, but it would make a noticeable difference in your glue lines and your joints uh, if you did just use the digital gauge for these. So definitely still stick with the square. Um, you can see here it's off just a little bit, but definitely enough to make a, a noticeable difference. And while I was filming this, I was testing it out enough times that I realized about one out of five times, it should be right on, since it could be anywhere from 89.8 to 90.2. And sure enough, about one out of five times, it was spot on to my square, which you may like to hear, you may not like to hear. Um, I don't really like that, because now it kind of lulls you into complacency, because you said, hey, I checked it that one time, and it was absolutely perfect, but the next time it could be anywhere in that range. Straight edges and squares are not a fun tool to buy, at least for most people. They're not really satisfying. It's not like buying a new power tool because um, this drawer, you know, I probably have $500 into, but they really are worth it in the long run. I did want to point out that I do think there is a time and a place for these digital gauges. Um, let's say you were doing a bevel on the edge of a table and you wanted a 70 degree bevel. It doesn't have to be 70.000. You know, if you get it within 0.2 or even 0.5, it's not going to make a difference visually. Maybe you want a 50 degree angle, just an arbitrary angle. Absolutely, these digital gauges work just perfect for that. It's when you have the glue lines and the joints that you really need the perfect 90.0 or the 45.0 that I would only use a square for. I would like to hear from some of you woodworkers in the comments below on whether you think 0.2 of a degree is enough to justify spending a couple hundred dollars on some quality squares or if you think the digital gauges are good enough for the type of woodwork we do. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and uh, please subscribe for more videos.